Silver is up today, and I don't want to overexpose the chickens. So yeah, um, s s silver is up, and a question a lot of people probably have is that if silver was only an industrial metal, right? People didn't buy bullions, they didn't buy bars, monster boxes. I'll try and think outside the monster box here. What would the price be right now? Well, my estimate is if nobody um, bought silver as like bullion or an investment, if it was only a strict commodity, like say aluminum, aluminum, maybe 1850, right? So the difference between 1850 and this, that's like the, the investment portion. And that is all people who like, you know, all the, all the investment portion. So another question I might have is, well, what about, what if, what if silver had the same role as gold in our monetary system and it was not a commodity? I think that's easier. I think you would go historically and say, um, 16 to 1 ratio, silver is 100 bucks an ounce, right? So, so if gold and silver were held by central banks, it wasn't a commodity. Maybe 100 bucks for silver. And 1850 is a commodity. So that gives you a very big range where silver could, silver could trade, right? I mean, the, the investment portion, portion gets heats up like last year. That thing can go really, really high. The discouragement that sets in, it can go down to 1850, theoretically. It's like a limit. It's not going to go down there. So people might say, I heard one comment saying, I'm the silver skeptic. I'm trying to be the silver realist, right? I don't want people to to um, only hear like one side of silver, right? You know, we all know that silver has a long role as money. And there's, it, most likely, it's going to become money again. I mean, we look, look, historically, the trends, right? This thing keeps reappearing as money. I can't say when that's going to happen, though. Months, years, decades, I, I, I don't know. I can't speculate there. But um, I, 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 I kind of wanted to, th to throw that point um, out you. And, and here, here's a, um, another thing I read. It says, last week, silver stockpiles in the COMEX monitored warehouses are at their highest level since December 2009. That's kind of the opposite of the buff the COMEX meme that was going around. Remember people saying buff the COMEX, right? Well, the COMEX is the fullest it's been since 2009. So that kind of tells me that, you know, um, if, the, if, if the COMEX is so full, that, 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 that indicates something, right? And also, too, is I got an email from Atmex a few days ago. I, I think it's gone. They had like a one-day sale where you could buy American Eagles at spot price, right? Um, Silver Eagles at spot price. So... That tells me that there's someone sitting on a lot of bullion. Well, relatively speaking, a lot of bullion, right? I mean, there's not a lot of this stuff in the world, but um, it, it tells me that, that there's more stuff available now than there has been in three years. Now, obviously, if you're someone who, who sees things heat up and cool down, the time to buy is when everybody hates it. Um, but maybe there's more hate coming, right? Um, I don't know. I don't want to give advice there. I mean, obviously, I'm not trying to trade. Speaking of trading, is um, one, one of my friends did a video with showing... Um, when silver had its big run-up um, last year, the size of the contracts being bought, right? You see, you see these graphs, you see price, time, you see volume. Well, one important um, thing that to me now is, well, who is buying? Not buying, but who is buying? Like central banks buying gold, that, that is very meaningful to me. Central banks are buying gold. Now, for silver last year, he, he, um, on, on, his, on, his, on his, um, his video, he showed that Early, before, just when silver took off, the big contracts are being sold. These are the huge contracts that, you know, I couldn't even come close to having enough money to buy one of those giant contracts, right? So obviously those are institutional buyers. Those are the hedge funds, the big banks. So the big banks and hedge funds were buying the large contracts, and then it took off. The, 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 the small contracts were bought, the retail investor was buying, and then the big banks and the hedge funds dumped their contracts because you can see they're selling. So essentially, the hedge funds and big banks, they pumped and dumped silver in a short period of time. Now, obviously, it wasn't physical silver, and obviously, they're in it for a short period of time. They're, they're not concerned about things like silver becoming money again in the future. To them, it's like the now, you know, trade it now, trade it now. That's The, the, the horizon is very narrow. So I thought that was kind of fascinating is um, that last, remember, remember last year I did a video saying how JP Morgan had his best quarter ever. The, 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 the time when silver hit a 30-year high, I think that's telling us who, who, who was pumping and dumping that silver in the short term. Now, obviously, um, in, in, in years down the road, people will probably be saying, well, I wish I bought at those high levels because that's what happens. Like, in the, my analogy is Microsoft soft stock. If you bought Microsoft at the high every year in the 80s, in the 90s, you're really happy. So, you know, I can't really tell you how or when to buy. I just want to point out, I want to be the silver realist here, and I want to think outside the master box. So thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.